but other policy areas. And, and the question I want to put to you, Oliver, is why has Ardern been so spectacularly unsuccessful at any of the reforms she promised? I mean, for instance, in housing, she promised 100,000 affordable homes. Uh, the exact figure, well, you can tell me, but it, it's, it's somewhat smaller than that, isn't it? I mean, it's just not been a government that's very good at doing the things that it says it's going to do. That is the biggest weakness of our government, its delivery, or rather the lack of delivery. And you're asking, why is that the case? Well, my theory is that the government simply wasn't prepared for government. In 2017, for a long time, the Labour Party was at about 20% of the ports, until about six weeks before the election when the then party leader, Andrew Little, resigned and handed over to his deputy, Jacinda Ardern. So Jacinda Ardern came out of relative obscurity she was young, she was fresh, she was new, she was positive, she had a big smile, and that basically propelled her to 36, 37% in the election. And then she was lucky because Winston Peters decided to go with her, so she found a coalition partner, the Greens supported that arrangement, and suddenly she had more than 50% of the seats in Parliament, and she was Prime Minister. But until about six, seven weeks before the election, it didn't look like that at all. It looked like it would yet be another resounding election defeat for the Labour Party. And that's why Labour simply wasn't prepared. Yes, of course, they talked about um, great ambitions. They wanted to eradicate child poverty. They wanted to build the 100,000 homes. They wanted to deliver all sorts of good things, but they had never really thought deep and hard about how to achieve that because the chances of them actually being on the Treasury benches were so remote that they didn't even <laughs> really dare to prepare for that. And so what we saw in the first term of the Erdogan government from 2017 to 2020 was a flurry of, of working groups, of inquiries. So by my count, they had but more than 200 such working groups where they were just trying to figure out, okay, we're in government now, so what the hell are we going to do with that? And of course, they didn't get much done. So the first term was a wasted opportunity where a lot of talk happened and not much delivery. You mentioned the 100,000 homes target. That was very ambitious. It came out of a party conference, I think in 2014, 15, something like that. Actually, the stories I heard about that target, initially that was supposed to be 50,000, and at the party conference on a Saturday night, they thought, well, 100,000 sounds a lot better, let's make it 100,000. This is the kind of policy making that happened in opposition, and you get away with that in opposition because you don't have to implement it. Once in government, it comes a bit harder, and the actual figure on houses delivered from the 100,000 houses target is a bit more than 1,300 after five years. So you can see this was a party simply not prepared, not ready for government. And then, of course, we had a few other crises to deal with. We had the Canterbury terror attacks. We had the Wild Island volcanic eruption. Then we had COVID. And so basically, not much got done in the first term of the Erdogan government.